morning, everybody. Gonna say good morning. It is Monday morning, and I thought I would make a video today about what I eat in a day, but also include some easy recipes that I've made for years and years for anybody who maybe is like starting off in cooking. Because I think these are really good, easy to do, and also fun to explore sort of recipes that are healthy, that are quick to make, and really don't require that much time at all. So we're gonna start with breakfast. And I'm very hungry because I've been waiting to film this part and uh, haven't eaten breakfast yet. So for breakfast, I usually eat something that I can make super quickly, eat pretty easily and non-messily, and will basically keep me full until lunchtime. So these are my overnight oats. Cue the montage where I show you how to make it. In this, I put oats and chia, and then a milk of your choice. I just drink whole milk. And then a sweetener, usually honey or maple syrup. Today, I used maple syrup because it's got that fall vibe. And then I also add a teeny tiny bit of vanilla for flavor. So what I usually do with this, I mix it up a little bit because the oats have sunk into the bottom. This is basically like an apple jam sauce sort of thing. Uh, these apples came from when I made my apple cider and apple juice, which I made in this video right there. But yeah, I had a lot of apples left over. They were all spiced and I was like, I could put them on yogurt or something. So I'm gonna put these on top today. When I eat this, I usually do like to put something on top. So today it's apples because fall vibes, but you can put berries, strawberries, blackberries, raspberries, blueberries. You can also put like a jam sometimes. Like sometimes I'll just buy a jam at the store and just put it on top. You can also put dried fruits and dried nuts. It's a very versatile thing. It's kind of like cold oatmeal, but more refreshing and better. And uh, my mouth is watering now because I'm very hungry. Time to eat. It's time to eat. I'm gonna eat my breakfast, yeah. So when I'm not drinking coffee because my anxiety is high, then I'll usually make a big mug of tea. I like using the Lipton decaffeinated one just because it's a very standard black tea that's decaf. Add a little bit of sugar, a little bit of milk, and then I sip on that all morning while I do my morning work. Now let's eat some of this. Mm -hmm. The apple's really good. The apple definitely like brings it that fall vibes. I know that this breakfast is not exactly the most aesthetic or visually pleasing because at the end it's just like white-ish mush, but it is really tasty. It's super easy to do and it's very refreshing to eat. Good breakfast option in my opinion. It's time for lunch. It's 12.30 p.m. and now I'm gonna make lunch. So today on the menu, I'm gonna make a tofu bowl. This is a, also a very good food for like hot weather and also a very healthy one in case I wanna eat something that's not that heavy uh, but still tastes super, super good. So I'm gonna show you how I do that. So these are all the things that you need to make the tofu bowl. You need tofu, rice, you need some green onions, soy sauce, and then these are optional, but this is how I like to make it. I've got some roasted sesame seaweed. This one I just got from Costco. But you can use kind of any seaweed that you like. Some katsubushi, which is like bonito flakes, I guess. Bonito flakes, you can also find this at the Asian market. And then this is otsuyu, which like this thing is such a staple in Japanese cooking that I do recommend having this if you want to make lots of different Japanese recipes, but you don't have to. The beauty of this bowl is you can kind of flavor it however you want if you have some general Asian flavors. So first we're gonna start off with rice. I made a bunch of rice yesterday and I made it in my Zojirushi rice cooker. In terms of how to make rice, there's a ton of other YouTube videos to follow, but really just get yourself a rice cooker. They're not that expensive. And then next we're gonna do the tofu. So I'm not gonna use all of the tofu. For one serving, I usually do just like a half block of tofu. So I'm gonna cut it and drain the water that's inside so that the water doesn't go everywhere. I'm gonna store the other half in a little container. You can keep tofu for a couple of days in the fridge. I just like to add water to it so that it stays pretty moist, kind of just like that. So the next thing you're gonna do is you're just gonna crumble this tofu into the rice thing. And really, there's no rhyme or reason. You just kind of crumble it with your hands. 
Uh, tofu is a really good source of protein and it's a very clean protein too. Tofu, a lot of people are intimidated by because the flavor itself is like, there's not that much flavor. I mean, it does have flavor, but tofu really shines when you add other flavors to it. And that's how you cook tofu. So I'm gonna make like a little sauce for this. I've got uh, about one tablespoon of soy sauce. If you don't like things to be that salty, then I recommend going less. I'm also gonna do one tablespoon of this otsuyu dashi stock. This really has that uh, what American people like to call umami, but really it's just it's just fish stock. It's it's fish. Uh, I'm gonna add like half a tablespoon of sesame oil. I kind of want to add a little bit of spice to this. So I'm actually gonna make some sriracha. You know what's even better? Sambal sauce, which is also made by the same company. So I'm gonna actually just do some sambal. This is really just up to you, however spicy you want it. I'm gonna do like that much, if you can see that. Cause I just want it to be a hint of spicy. And then you're basically just gonna mix it up. It's super duper easy. You can taste the sauce before it goes into the bowl to taste whether you like it or not. That's pretty good. I would actually maybe even do like a little less of the sesame because it's a very overpowering uh, flavor. That's done. You don't need that much sauce, just this much. And then I'm just gonna pour it all over and then kind of coat the rice and the tofu with this sauce. And then next and finally are the toppings. For green onions, make sure you wash it because there's dirt and stuff in there. And if it's not dirt, then it's germs from other people and stuff. And especially during COVID time, you should probably wash your veggies. Okay, just gonna cut off the ends and then cut it in half so that you can just do half the work. I'm actually gonna put that in last because I think the color of it's gonna look really nice. And it's always good to have a little bit of green in an otherwise very beige food. So next I'm gonna put the seaweed in. I'm just gonna cut a few, like they're, they come in sheets like this. And then I'm basically gonna make flakes by cutting them up like this. You just cut it directly into your bowl. See, now that's already got some color, it's looking good. Next, I'm gonna add these bonito flakes. Bonito is just a type of fish. Uh, in Japanese, it's called katsu, and these are just flakes that look like this. And I like adding it just because it's another layer of flavor. And now that we've got all those toppings, then it's green onions time. I'm actually gonna add a little bit of sesame seeds as well because it puts sesame oil in it and I feel like I'm going for like a sesame sort of theme. The seaweed also has sesame, so not a whole lot, just a little sprinkle. And then we're done. This is the completed product. It looks super delicious. I eat this when I'm feeling lazy to cook. I want something cool but filling to eat. I want protein and I want carbs and I want any of the other vegetables that you put on top. Mm. That was delicious. It's salty, it's a little bit spicy, it's very refreshing still. There's a lot of different textures and flavors, and it's tofu. It's tofu, but like just really good tofu. I've been making this for years, but over the years, I think I've figured out what flavors I like in this, and then also have layered the toppings on it. I put kimchi on top of this before. You can put like leftover meats on top of this if you want, leftover veggies. It's really just kind of whatever you want it to be, and you can really just experiment with different spices and flavors in your kitchen to make it yours. That was a very good lunch. I finished all of it. I'm pretty full. Generally for lunch, I like to eat things that are not that heavy because I don't want a food coma after lunch because I still have an afternoon of things to do. So I tend to kind of eat on the lighter side. That means eating a pretty balanced meal, which I kind of try to do for most lunches and dinners of having a good mix of carbs, protein, fibers, other things in that food pyramid, and then other things for just flavor too. So I like making food. I make food basically every meal uh, with Scott and so we both really enjoy cooking. I think we've learned a lot of what there is to know about cooking on the internet and in San Diego we're very fortunate to have all these kinds of grocery stores 
flavors and lots of great ingredients and stuff. It's a very important part of me to nourish my body with the right things and also to take care of it so that uh, I can do what I want to do in life. Another thing that I think about a lot in making food is understanding the environmental impact that I have on food. Yes, I still do eat meat because it's a important part of my diet, but not nearly as much. So food like tofu that doesn't create as much greenhouse gases to contribute to climate change is really important. And this is where I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, Sunrun. Climate change is definitely happening, especially in California where we have wildfires all the freaking time. And the current energy system, as we've seen it, uh, has a ton of unknown. And so you can't predict how often rates might climb or if a storm is going to come and if you're going to lose power and for how long. But the one thing that is super reliable though is that the sun will rise each day. And with Sunrun's rechargeable battery systems, you have control over the energy that you consume now and also in the future. Not to mention just solar energy just completely makes sense. Like why were we going through all of the arcane ways of getting energy when there is a completely sustainable, renewable source of energy in the sky every dang day. And so with Sunrun, the combination of solar plus battery keeps the lights on during blackouts because you're not tied to the grid. You can also choose to back up whatever you want. So you can either choose to back up your entire home or just the essentials. With Sunrun, you can choose your solar plans, services, and discounts. So you can choose a plan that fits well for your needs. Also, Sunrun is your guide. They are experts in solar energy. And so they're incredibly knowledgeable. They're very optimistic about using reusable energy sources in the future. And they're incredibly ambitious. They're a company that's really turned it around for solar energy. So if you're interested in learning more about Sunrun and reusable energy through solar, then visit the link in the description box down below. And thank you so much to Sunrun for sponsoring. <laughs> Scott snacks. What are we eating, Scott? Pears that come in skirts. Pears that come in skirts? Mm-hmm. You always come in the... Oh, the pears that come in diapers. Diapers! <laughs> That's what you call them. Do you think snacks are an important part of a daily diet? Mm-hmm. You don't want it? Will Benny eat it? dinner time. <laughs> Why I did that, I do not know. For dinner today, we're making a meal that Scott and I often, often have. It's one of the first kind of regular meals that we started to have when we graduated college. It's one of the easiest things. It's still like comfort food to us, but we're basically going to make baked chicken and veggies. It's super yummy, so let's do it. First thing you're going to do is set the oven to 425. Take the chicken out of the pack. I'm gonna use drumsticks. I also use thighs for this recipe. You could also use white meat like breast or something for example, but I like using dark meat for this. And I'm just gonna use three drumsticks. So we're gonna wash them. Then I'm just gonna pat them dry. I ended up just deciding to use all of them because why not? It's worth it to just make a bunch of chicken at once and then just have leftovers than just needing to cook many more times, you know? Make sure you wash your hands. And now I'm basically just gonna flavor the chicken. So first I'm gonna put some apple cider vinegar, probably like two tablespoons. And then I'm also gonna add one tablespoon of olive oil. As far as spices go, I'm gonna keep it pretty simple. I'm gonna use Lari's garlic salt. This has been a staple in our kitchen for many years, but we just buy this at Costco. Honestly, this chicken is fine just with the garlic salt. I'm gonna add a couple of other things in here, but this makes cooking very, very easy. So I'm gonna add about one tablespoon into here. Next, I'm just gonna add some sage, and that also, that's probably gonna be like a quarter of a teaspoon. Some cayenne pepper. Cayenne really is pretty spicy, so I like to add it even just a little bit, even if you don't like spice, because it wakes up the flavors. But also, if you like spicy, you can just add more. For this, I'm gonna do like one, two, three, four. And so now, before I mix, I'm actually just gonna get the pan ready so that while my hand's dirty, I can do two things at once. So I just took one of these like glass casserole dishes aluminum foil on it. It's just the easiest way to like clean up right afterwards because then the stuff won't get onto the pan itself. So now I'm just gonna mix it with my hands. 
Best part about this dish is that this is a great place to experiment with different spices. So if you go to the spice aisle at your local supermarket or your market or whatever, and then just experiment with lots of different flavors and dry rub. Honestly, this dish is really kind of how we learned about how to use certain savory spices and it's been pretty eye-opening. So now it's all mixed and now I'm just gonna line it on the pan. I'm gonna take the rest of the sauce and just kind of drizzle it over everything. And that's it, your chicken is ready to go into the oven. At 425, I usually do it for like 20 minutes on one side, open the oven and then flip it and do another 20 minutes. So the oven's ready, so I'm gonna pop these in. Next up, we're gonna do these rainbow carrots. I really like rainbow carrots. It just adds a lot of color to a dish and they just taste like regular carrot. Now, I'm not gonna peel them because I think a lot of the flavor is in the skin, but I will wash them and chop them up. So now I'm just chopping off the ends of all of the carrots. And now I'm gonna cut them into bite-sized pieces. So be careful when you're cutting. Kind of just into like that size shape. So now that these are all cut and beautiful, I'm just gonna add some rosemary, salt, and olive oil and just toss them. Uh oh, and also pepper, pepper, pepper. And now all you gotta do is just toss it and then just put all of your carrots onto the pan. And then these basically just go into the oven with your chicken. You do have to keep an eye on these because these don't cook for as long as a chicken, but you can just kind of throw them in there. <laughs> all right everyone well i hope you liked that video and all the recipes that i shared let me know if you want another video like this maybe to share some of my japanese recipes or anything else let me know in the comments down below make sure to hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more from me i hope you all are doing well and i will see you next time bye